Catherine Innovation has a, usually a transformative vision of our society, so it's about the social cause, be uh, another for, way of development in the appropriate technology or rejecting the industrial model of development, or be about alternative sustainable societies in the social technology network, or um, democratizing the access to, to technology. Um, participation is also key. So it's, it's, all, it's all about trying to create solutions to the problem that the people have, but not from a top-down approach, but with, with the people itself. So it's, it's, it's how people can uh, develop the idea or, or find the, the, which is what, what's the problem, but also how they can participate in trying to create the solution to that problem. Uh, or gas innovation movements, they, they, they do build capabilities, but they also build something else, which is a sense of belonging to this movement, some kind of subjectivity or identity with the social movement, but also some kind of different citizenship, so which is the, the, the recognition of the right to have a say in the discussion about science and technology. I mean, for me, one of the um, really key lessons, I think, or what I got most from the project and learned the most is, is through the, looking at quite different movements across time and different places and how each can kind of inform the way you look at, at the others, if you like. So, um, I mean, a good example there is, is two movements we looked at. One was the movement for socially useful production in the 1970s and 80s, and another was the sort of the, the, the growth of hacker spaces, fab labs and maker spaces now. And one of the things the kind of hackers and makers are doing now is um, appropriating and working with digital fabrication tools. And what's really intriguing there is um, how the evolution, if you look back where these sorts of tools were coming from, it's out of computer numerically controlled machine tools, which in the 1970s were destroying manufacturing communities and de-skilling workers. So how come they're being celebrated now as a kind of um, creative, productive thing, when back then they were this threat? The nice thing about connecting between movements is if we look back at the socially useful production movement, and particularly a thing called the Lucas Plan, the sort of shop floor workers that were confronting the early introduction of these, these computer controlled technologies, they weren't simply resisting them, they were trying to shape, they were saying, okay, let's, let's get involved in the design of these technologies in ways that enhance our skills and put people at the centre. And you can learn about their struggle to do that and where they succeeded in developing participatory design techniques and where they failed in actually uh, addressing the, to the political and economic fundamentals of, of technology development. And then you, you can draw on those lessons to think about, okay, well, what, what are the hackers nowadays working at? And maybe are they failing to address certain questions and issues? Brazil, in the Northeast Brazil, the Social Technologies Network, there was a, a, a solution proposed by a wide set of actors, different types of organizations, grassroots groups, that um, proposed responding to drought-prone um, challenges and vulnerabilities by developing this uh, cistern that could be built by local people, and uh, I think several hundred thousand were built. Um, and the government became interested in supporting this. It was seen as successful and interesting, and so became involved, but then there was this idea that, uh, on the part of these government actors, that they could make it happen faster um, and hit, uh, address the needs of more people more quickly uh, by using plastic cisterns instead of these self-built ones. So there, that raised different problems because that lost an essential component for many of the grassroots actors of this solution, which was building local capacities and also introduced different power dynamics in terms of where that plastic came from, who benefited from that. And, um, and so there was actually a protest in response to uh, this reaction from the government, where it's, it's interesting, you have this tension of different priorities. So trying to meet the needs faster of water uh, water needs versus thinking about the the deeper well the, the idea of building capabilities as, as an essential component of that solution. 
Um, so I think it's it's a nice illustration of those tensions that come about when trying to in, when there's encounters between grassroots innovation movements and policy. New technologies have emerged, new markets have emerged, the new contexts have emerged as far as it's concerned. And still, uh, uh, grassroots innovations, which have um, embedded in their own routines, though in new social values and so on, etc., have to now themselves then transform themselves. Mm. That's a, a huge challenge. They, uh, that's the challenge of credibility, that if you are not able to transform, if you are not able to build the capabilities as a, uh, of our marketing capabilities or use, uh, uh, adapting to the users as far as are concerned, then again, the new audiences don't get enrolled, networks don't develop, the credibility is lost over the media. We have seen several grassroots innovation movements dying. Every grassroots innovation movement faces this challenge. We should not romanticize that. We, uh, actually, we should see them as journeys in which uh, a lot of creative effort and strategies and heuristics have to be continuously evolved and uh, developed. Since the UN General Assembly and the third Financing for Development Conference happened last year in 2015, there's been a huge amount of interest in the role of science, technology and innovation in addressing the Sustainable Development Goals. There's been massive mobilizations of capital in the private sector, in areas around energy, agriculture and health. There's been attempts to coordinate across the UN and uh, across um, governments and as well as public and private actors. Now, these large scale initiatives are vitally important, but whatever happens in that sphere, I think what I've learned from this book and what I think is really interesting about this book is that uh, more local, small-scale, bottom-up, grassroots innovation is going to still play a really significant, if not the most important, part in addressing and reaching wider sustainability goals.